So welcome everyone. Um, why don't we, I'll just mention if you, if you haven't um, set up the, uh, the dev org to do the hands-on exercises, we use a special kind of dev org and the instructions are in this red bit.ly link down, down below. Uh, we won't be doing a hands-on exercise for probably about 10 minutes. So you've got a little bit of time if you wanna just step through the steps. If you've previously set up um, a dashboard dojo dev org, um, you can reuse that dev org. What I might just ask you to do is rerun the trailhead data manager, which is step two on the dojo setup, which is very simple to do. And it'll just push the dates into, uh, into Q1 from Q4. All right, why don't we get started? Welcome everyone. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna start the recording. Where did my recording link go? Okay. Oh, it looks like we're already recording. That's great. Um, uh, welcome everyone to the Dashboard Dojo. My name is David Carnes, um, and uh, today we're going to do a deep dive on joined reports. Uh, I have a special guest helping me out, who's Daniel Gordon, uh, and Daniel will be um, leading us uh, in the next session on NPSP, so reporting in N NPSP, the Nonprofit Service, service Pack or Success Pack. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, welcome to the Dojo today. Let's get started. All right, so our agenda, we're gonna cover setting up your dev org in case you haven't. I'll mention it two more times how to do it. Um, uh, and maybe uh, Daniel can grab the bit.ly link and share, uh, share that uh, as well uh, a few times um, for anybody who joins late. We'll talk about just uh, who I am and who Daniel is. Um, since spring 21 release is coming right up, we'll talk about preparing for that. Um, then we're going to get into some, you know, techniques, practice, and sparring. There's a bunch of things that I'd like to cover with joined reports. Um, we'll talk about upcoming dojo topics. We'll talk about some op focus uh, upcoming events, and we'll do Q and A. And because the inauguration is today, a very special day, I happen to pick this and not think about the uh, inauguration. Um, we'll go ahead and, and just look to end a bit early in case anybody wants to watch that. So welcome if you've just joined us. Um, so there are two steps for setting up this special kind of dev org that we use in the dashboard dojo to do hands-on sessions. So if it's your first time doing a hands-on session with us, um, the first thing I want you to do is create an Einstein analytics dev org. And then the second thing I want you to do is run the trailhead data manager. Those steps are explained on a page that there's the, the red bit.ly link and Daniel has pasted that link into the chat. Um, uh, um, it should take about five, maybe 10 minutes to do these two steps. If you've joined us before um, in, in uh, last, uh, last year, um, October, November, December, uh, and you set up um, one of these dev works, what you might do is just run the Trailhead Data Manager again. So there is an app up in the app launcher up in the top left of your Salesforce org. Uh, if you select the Trailhead Data Manager app, there's a Trailhead Data Manager tab and you can click the button to refresh. And that's also listed on the step two of the setup. So if you haven't set up a dev org to do the hands-on, this is your time to do it. And I'll share the slide again. Um, uh, Daniel, maybe you could paste. Oh yeah, you, you've already done it a few times. Great, thank you. So in the chat is the, that bit.ly link to make it easy for you. All right, so who am I? My name is David Carnes. Uh, I have just changed my role. It's a very exciting time for me. Uh, last time we met, my title was CEO. Today, my title is Chairman and Chief Evangelist um, at OpFocus, very exciting times. Um, I, I, I'm somehow in my 16th year, some get close to my 17th year working on the platform. Um, I've been part of the Platform Champion Program for a couple of years now. It's fantastic. If you're not aware of the Champion Programs, they're really quite great and just a nice way, nice way to meet more people in the community. Um, I did live in Japan for two and a half years, and that's partly where the idea of the dojo came from. And, you know, sort of fun fact, I used to give tours at this castle. Um, which was first a fortified hill in 1333 that was created by Akamatsu. This building has 911 windows, which is kind of cool. Um, so OpFocus, we're a um, consulting uh, shop. We work with SaaS companies on their revenue operations and Salesforce is a big part of it and that whole surrounding go-to-market tech stack. So OpFocus, we're based in the US and Canada. We've been a partner of Salesforce for a long time. Um, uh, welcome. So um, 
it would be um, remiss of me to not mention the Spring 21 release, which is already underway. Um, so there are pre-release orgs that you can sign up for to try out the new features. There are the release notes that always have a couple of pages on reports and dashboards. You can see the screenshot over on the right. And the release is already underway. So the first orgs have already been upgraded as of January 16th. And then the next two windows are February 6th and February 12th and 13th. If you're not sure how to find out when your um, instance of Salesforce will be upgraded, there's two steps. So here in the screenshot on the bottom left, if you go to setup company information within your system, you can see what your instance is. So it's next to the word instance here, you see NA150. That's from the dev work I'm using today. Step two is to go to status.salesforce.com and um, put in that NA150 instance. And then there are three tabs, current status, history, and maintenance. And you can see the maintenance of uh, the, the maintenance window. So for this org, it'll be February 13th at 1 a.m. Eastern time. Um, one other interesting thing that I just noticed uh, that I'll tweet out about tomorrow is on this page that shows you about your instance, you can actually subscribe for updates about your instance. So you just click on the subscribe button, put in your email address, and it'll give you notifications about that instance. So kind of a cool tip that I just discovered this morning. All right, so what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to talk about joint reports, uh, of course. We'll talk about things you can do and things you can't do with joined reports. We'll talk about joined report use cases. Um, I'll share 10 quick tips, maybe it won't be so quick, but um, just things I've noticed along the way working with joined reports that might be helpful to you. We're gonna do three examples. We'll do one an open ops by industry, one an open ops by with open cases, uh, by owner, and then we'll talk about cross-block formulas and we'll do an example with uh, cross-block cross -block formulas. I realize that this is pretty um, opportunity and case-centric. The reason for that in these dev orgs is we have 700 and something opportunities and we have a thousand accounts and we have 1600 cases. So this is the data set that I'm working with. So we'll just use that for the examples today. But these things, these techniques will apply to campaigns or to custom report types for um, uh, NPSP or for other types of data uh, in your Salesforce instance. All right, so just to mention again, if you're gonna do the hands-on work with us, um, you, you should, if you haven't already, take a few minutes to set up a dev org. Um, so this is a special kind of Salesforce instance, um, and there are two steps to be prepared to have the same environment that I do, so you can see and follow along and do some of the exercises today. So these are the steps, and you can find them at this bit.ly bit slash dojo underscore setup. All right, great. Let's get into it. Um, so joined reports, what can they do? Uh, so they can do most things that reports can do, which is kind of cool. Uh, we can add columns, we can add summary columns, filters, summary formulas. Uh, we can leverage both standard and custom report types, which is good, great. Um, just like um, standard reports, you can have up to three groupings. Um, in order to be able to do that, you have to have enough common elements across the blocks that you, uh, that you add to the joined report. So that's why I have the little asterisk there. If somehow you added, um, two blocks and there was only one field common, probably at a minimum, you'd always have at least two fields, the owner and maybe the owner alias or something like that. But, but that's, you know, for most, for all intents and purposes, you can do three groupings. You can also add a chart uh, to your joined reports. Um, on a joined report, we can combine up to five reports. So I want you to think about this. This means we can actually take five separate reports and put them together on the same report. And those five separate reports, we call them blocks. Um, and so we can add report types if they have relationships with the same object or objects, and we can put them together on that same report. Um, and as I mentioned, we can reference both standard and custom objects. So if you have a lot of custom objects in your system, this might be a great way to dig into that data uh, is to use um, joined reports. So we also have the ability to do cross-block formulas, which we'll talk about in a bit, and also cross-block charts. And if you've never used a scatter plot, this is a perfect use case, but there is one tip that I'm gonna share with you to help you be successful with them. 
So what are some things that joined reports can't do? Bucket fields, those fell by the wayside. Cross filters, conditional highlighting, these cannot support reporting snapshots. They are also not available in essentials or professional editions. So if uh, let's say a spouse or significant other says, hey, can you help, you, help me out with Salesforce because you're such a Salesforce rock star, they're in a smaller organization and they're using essentials or professional edition, you just won't see the ability to create a joined report. It just won't be there. All right. Um, uh, I thought to talk about some use cases, but maybe as we get started, um, if anyone has any use case that they might share, uh, maybe what you might do, like any any use cases where you've been successful in the past or you've tried, uh, it'd be great to hear from you. And all you need to do is raise your hand and maybe share your name, where you're based, and then um, what reporting need have you solved or tried to solve with joined reports. Um, I'll go first just to get the uh, conversation flowing. Uh, so I've got an example down here around go-to-market planning. And if you attended one of the um, uh, dojos at the end of the year last year, we talked about this a bit where we create a joined report combining one opportunities and open opportunities and we group it by industry and we can see, you know, maybe we decide where we place our chips for the marketing spend for the year because we might've had good success in one industry and we have a lot of open pipeline. Maybe there's some other industry where we've had a lot of success but we don't have open pipeline and we wanna place our marketing bets there. So just as an example for using it for go-to-market planning. I'm curious if anyone else has, uh, has an example that they might share. So if you just raise your hands, uh, Daniel can unmute you and you can share with us if you have any um, examples. And I'll keep talking in the meantime. So please feel free to drop in. Uh, please feel free to share an idea if you have it, just raise your hand. Looks like we have one, Daniel, Ann. Go ahead, Ann. Hi, Ann. Hi, so I'm working on a model where I've got a custom object that has um, five custom objects hanging off of that. And I've been beginning to try using joined reports to build reporting on that. People really want to be able to see that whole universe of data on reports. Um, and any questions you have for that would be helpful. Oh, okay. So uh, how is it going with your with your try at it? What, what were the blocks that you put onto the report? So basically I've got a master object and I've got the junior object one as one block and the master object plus junior object two is the second block and so on. Um, okay. Okay, that's great. And sometimes even just, um, uh, you know, it's, it's playing with the blocks and what fields are available with those report types that you've chosen. Um, uh, and then, you know, determining what it is that you might count or not count. One big decision with joined reports is, do you wanna show them expanded or collapsed? And I think a lot of my examples are all collapsed, but it is possible to you know, show the details and look at them expanded. Uh, so you know, that might be one of those things. In fact, I'll show an example later where if you toggle off the row counts and you add a, a block of cases, you don't even see the block. The block isn't there because you have to, you have to sort of have something to show. So if row counts is off and, and details is collapsed, you literally don't see the block, which is kind of interesting. But I think um, sort of tinkering across, you know, trying out some different things uh, can help you get closer. Um, mm -hmm. We'll also talk about uh, cross object formulas that can help us do math across the blocks in a little bit. And that might be something else that's helpful. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, any other um, examples anybody would like to share? I'll just uh, share a couple of others. So priori prioritization of cases is sort of an old favorite example of mine uh, because it combines three blocks sh showing one opportunities, open opportunities, and then open cases. And you might, if you have a heavy service cloud usage, you might have open high priority cases. And if you put those side by side, maybe look at it by account, you could see how much of the, we sold to them in the past how, many, how, many, how much do we have open as far as pipeline? And then do they have any open cases? And I might want the support team to prioritize, you know, just to try to, you know, especially during a down, a down economy, it's like whatever, whatever business we can bring in is good. So let's focus on the high priority. 
Um, another example actually came from, so Aaron Creer, who along with Evan Ponter um, uh, write the reportforce.blog, uh, which is just a great blog on reporting. Um, I saw Aaron speak up in Ottawa, I think it was, and he gave a great, just sort of a cool example of a joined report using campaigns, 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 and campaigns sort of side by side as separate blocks. And I really hadn't thought about that before in part because for years we could not use the same block twice. So it was sometime in the last year and a half, maybe two years that Salesforce sort of opened the gates and allowed us to use the same custom report type or standard report type over and over on a joined report. So this is where we can get this bottom example here of campaign analysis. You might do your worldwide campaign results and then maybe have campaign results for each region. And maybe you group that do a, a cross block grouping on campaign type and you might show metrics for the success. Looks like Jacob has uh, uh, an example to share. Good morning. Uh, my name's uh, Jacob and I'm an analyst with Software AG. Um, one use case I, you know, exploring is combining something of a campaign with campaign members report and a campaign with opportunities report in order to do, you know, full funnel metrics. Hearing about things like cross filters would allow for conversion rates to go across objects, which sounds awesome. So thank you, David, for allowing me to join today. Oh, okay, absolutely. And I just want to caution that the, the cross, cross filters were not available in joined reports, but we could do cross block formulas. So filters, okay. no, formulas, yes. Um, uh, and we'll do some examples in a little bit. Okay, great. So I think, you know, as with anything, having a, having some ideas on, on like what these might be used for can kind of get us oriented and marching forward with some sense of what, what it is that we're working on. Let's actually dive in. Um, so 10 quick tips. All right, I had fun putting these together. Number one, to start a joined report, you can start with pretty much any report. You just go up to the top left corner, click on the little down arrow. It was funny that it took me a while to find this in Lightning when it was first launched, um, when joined reports first were ported over to Lightning. I, I just was like, where do we do it? <laughs> it was sort of front and center and classic. Um, but if you click the down arrow here, you can switch from a report to a joined report. So you can create a joined report from any other report uh, just going up in that top left corner, clicking on the down arrow. So that's how we get started. So tip number two is you can rename your report blocks. And I actually think you probably should rename your report blocks as you're working um, with joined reports. It makes it easier for your users to understand what they're looking at, but it also makes it a lot easier for you um, to, um, to manage uh, the filters and the columns because you can expand and collapse and you can see that label that you gave it, such as accounts by owner, you can see it um, uh, in each of the filter and column sections as well. So you can see that up here in the top uh, left uh, screenshot here, you can see I've collapsed that accounts by owner. And this is another tip, don't forget, you know, not only to um, update the filters, um, just as you would any other report. So let's say I have a, um, on this example here in this screenshot, I have a joined report with three blocks. And it looks like I've just renamed the first block and you can see out of the box what Salesforce names your blocks, lead block one, opportunity block one which isn't really that helpful. I will usually name it by what I'm grouping it by, or maybe something about the filter, such as all one opportunities, something like that. But do not forget to update your filters. And again, you can expand and collapse these sections and you can see the names if you've relabeled them. The way to relabel them is to just to go up to the top of that, um, of that and you can see that there's a pencil over here um, as soon as you add the block, you can relabel the block and you just click the pencil to give it a name. And then you essentially click out of it and you can uh, now see that name in multiple places. All right, so a couple more tips. Um, let's go over here on the left, number five. Um, we have the option when you add your second block or your third block or your fourth block or your fifth block, you have the option to not include all the default columns. So that's kind of cool because 
on a joined report, they're really busy on their own. And it, you imagine like when you when you add opportunity report type to a report, it's got what, 15 columns in it? And it's just too many. And if you had three opportunity blocks side by side, you know, it's 45 columns potentially if you show all the details. So when you add a block, you can uncheck this include default columns and you'll essentially start off with an empty block and you can add columns to it um, and just start fresh. I like to do that myself. Um, uh, you know, another thing is on the report to just remove all extraneous columns, uh, again, because that left to right real estate is so valuable on all reports, but especially on a joined report, just because of how busy they are. All right, uh, quick tip number seven. The first block is thought of as the principal report type. And the common fields, such as when you add a grouping on a, on a joined report, the common fields are gonna be referenced by that principal report type. So you can see here that I have a joined report with accounts by owner, leads by owner, and ops by owner. So three different objects but my, group, my, my grouping across blocks is referenced by that principal report type, which is the first one in the list. So it's sort of an interesting thing to note. Um, you know, one other thing to share is that you can reorder the blocks. So you can drag and drop and reorder the blocks. You can delete blocks. There are things you can do to update. So if, let's say that um, we had a really great example of one for Jacob's campaign reporting, he can save as, so he creates one that works for him and then save as, create another copy of that report and remove a block and maybe add another block. So that can be really helpful, just keep that in mind. All right, so tips number eight and nine. Um, so there is the concept of common fields. So as you add blocks to a joined report, Salesforce is maintaining this list of common fields that can be used for the cross block grouping. And those common fields can be filtered in that top left. So if you see the word fields here on the num number nine um, tip. If I click on that uh, carrot there, it bumps out this window that we can see over here in number eight and it pops out and on a joined report, there, is, there are two things to note. One is that there's a little icon that tells us what's a common field. That's the little uh, blue, you know, sort of two, two origins, one arrow on the end. There's probably a name for that kind of an arrow. I don't know what it is. Um, but the other cool thing is that you can actually filter. So there could be a thousand fields, even more, depending on how many objects are in the customer or in that report type. There might be a thousand fields. I just wanna see the six that are the common fields. I can check that box and it's just gonna show me the, 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 the ones that are common fields across the blocks on your report. All right, the last tip is, um, oh, okay, sorry, I skipped my no tip number nine. If you add a block and you see nothing, this is a really important tip. And this is something that is gonna happen when we do an exercise in a few minutes. If you add a block and you see nothing, so the common example is you have one opportunities, open pipeline, these are two blocks on a joined report, and I go click add block and I add a block on cases. If I've hidden the detail rows or I'm not showing the row counts, even though the block is here, you don't see it on the, on, over on the right. What you need to do is either add a column display the row counts or display the detail rows. Any one of those three things will show the block. Uh, actually, you, you actually really, it's focused on these two. Show the rows, either show row counts and or detail rows and that will show the block for you. But you have to have a column. So if there is no column, you're not gonna see the block either. Uh, so I guess it could be any one of these three. All right, the last tip and we'll get into some exercises is when you first add a scatter plot onto a joined report. And this is such a great use case. Joined reports are a great use, use case for a scatter plot. This is one of those chart types that people struggle with. And one of the reasons is when you first add it, you get this sort of weird diagonal line of the blob circles. And the reason is that Salesforce doesn't know, doesn't know intuitively what you want to create the scatter plot on. So you see here that the default is the x-axis and the y-axis have the same summary column that's being used. And I might actually wanna change this to show one ops and the sum of open cases. And I can click on the down arrow for y-axis and that's gonna immediately change how this looks. So again, as you create a joined report, 
as you add your blocks and you summarize columns, at some point you may wanna add a chart. A scatter plot is absolutely an option, but when you add that as an option by you know, clicking on the uh, add chart, clicking on the gear, going down to scatter plot, selecting that, just note that the X and Y axes are gonna be the same. And it's sort of like, for, for I think for years I thought, my gosh, am I really that dumb? I cannot figure out why it just always, with other chart types, it sort of gives you something meaningful to look at to start with. All right, so let's go do a warm up together. So hopefully you guys have set up your, uh, your dev works. Daniel, if you haven't yet, why don't you just watch uh, for now? But the first exercise that we're gonna do is create a one and open ops by industry. And this is what the output will look like. So we're going to create a report on using the same block twice, opportunities and opportunities. One of them will add filters to say one opportunities. The other block will add, make it uh, open opportunities. And I'm going to ask you to save it because we'll use it two more times. All right, so in our system, so I've jumped over to the Salesforce instance. This is the special dev org that I asked you to create. Um, and I have a few more things in mind than you do, but don't worry about it. Um, on the reports tab, if you click on the new report button, let's go ahead and create a report on opportunities and just the standard opportunity block. And Alex asked a question, or I think it's pronounced Alex, sorry, Alex Let, about the recording. Yes, we will record. Um, I have actually two recordings to add to the website. Uh, so we're a little behind in getting the recordings up, um, but. So let's keep going on this example. So we're, we've added our first report on opportunities. And what I'm gonna do is, so this is just a standard report at this moment. Um, I'm gonna do one quick thing is to go to filters and let's change the close date to all time. We don't really have a ton of data and that, oh, that's not good. Uh, we don't have a ton of data in this Salesforce instance. We're gonna make one other filter change. So again, we created a report on opportunities and then we went to the filter sub tab and we're updating the close date to all time and the opportun opportunity status to closed one. So this is gonna be our, pr our principal block and it's gonna be the block over on the left. Note that there are a ton of columns in here. I might actually get rid of some of these columns. Uh, I'm not gonna do that now, but just a quick way to start over is actually to go to the column pull down and you can remove all columns there, or you can just X out columns, or you can go up to columns and choose the pull down and choose remove column. So a couple of different ways to get rid of columns. So we've just created a report on opportunities and we open, updated the filters to show all opportunities of all time and then just closed one opportunities. Now let's create a joined report so up in the top left corner, let's choose joined report and click apply. And you see that a blue line appears at the top and we have the word opportunity block one. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do two quick things. So let's, let's do two quick things. Let's do opportunity block one. Let's actually click on the pencil to the right of it. And let's just relabel that to one ops and click return or enter. So we've just relabeled the block and you can see that relabel block name over here um, on the columns. And if I click to filters, you can see the relabeled block name here as well. Let's do one more thing here. Let's go to the amount column and let's sum this column up so that we have at least one summary column. So let's click on the amount column on the left-hand side. So again, on the outline sub tab on the report, Scroll down a little bit, click on the amount and choose sum. All right, great, I'm getting kind of antsy. I wanna add another block. And you notice as soon as we made this a joined report, Salesforce gave us this ability to add block. So again, you can have up to five blocks side by side. So we have the ability to add four more blocks. So we're gonna add a block now. We're gonna choose the exact same report type opportunities. And notice here's the checkbox where if you don't want to include the default columns, we're just going to include them for now, just so we can keep going. But you could uncheck that and just start from scratch and add columns. I find that really helpful to just sort of start with exactly what I want. 
uh, rather than having to remove things. But we'll just use, we'll leave it alone for now. Just choose opportunities, leave the include default columns, click add block. And you can see that we've added our second block, but it's kind of hard to see because it's way over on the right. We just have too many columns here. So what I'm gonna suggest that we do is go ahead and add a grouping. So in our example, we were gonna group by industry. So on the outline tab, if we choose group across blocks, we can type in the word industry. And if I choose industry, um, now I can see that. And then just like any other uh, grouping you do on a report, uh, down at the bottom, now the toggles appear. And if I can get rid of the Zoom stuff, uh, it's too funny. Um, I'm just gonna untoggle detail rows just to collapse the report and we'll just see our two blocks more clearly. So right now um, we added a grouping on industry across the two blocks and we still have some work to do on that second block. So we're gonna make this open, op open ops and we're gonna update the filter. So let's go ahead and click on the pencil and we're gonna relabel that to open ops. Click enter. So we added a second report block on the same object for opportunities and we relabeled it by clicking the pencil just below that second block. Now let's do two more things. Now that this is relabeled, let's go to filters and I can collapse the one ops filter up here at the top. So the one ops, I can just sort of get it out of the way. That's gonna be really helpful when you get to having a report, a joined report with three, four or five blocks. So if I scroll down here, I've got, um, why don't we do close date all time and click apply. And we'll do opportunity status open, click apply. Okay, so we relabeled the second block to open ops. And then we went to the filters tab and we went down to our open ops filters sort of sub block there. And we changed the close date to all time and the opportunity status to open. Let's do one more thing. Let's go to the outline. Let's uh, click on the amount. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong one. See, I, I left the one ops open. I wanna go to the open ops and I wanna click on amount. And let's choose to sum that. And we can see that that sum now appear in our second block. So, we're just building each block and just keep in mind that there's sort of a rinse and repeat cycle here. You start your report, update the filters, get the columns right, change it to a joined report, add a second block, update the filters, relabel the block, add the columns that you want, add the summary rows that you want. And you know, if you wanted to add, we can add up to three more blocks to this. Um, at some point, it's really helpful to add that grouping and even collapse so you can sort of see what the output will look like. For example, I might actually wanna remove the row counts from this or I might wanna leave them. Why don't we just leave them for now? And let's go ahead and run it. And remember that when you're building the report, you're looking at the preview pane. It's just a smattering of data. It's not the actual full set of data. So did I really just do that? Uh, did I really just do what I just did? Oh no. <laughs> okay, you know what, I think I actually have this one saved. Uh, so I just blew up my report, but let's go into a folder that I created just in case I did that. Uh, and okay, phew. All right, I'm back where I was. So what I want you to do is run the report and we can just look at it and see what this looks like and then save it. And please save it as one ops and open ops or as I have here, joined hyphen one ops and open ops. We're gonna use this again in a couple of minutes. So please save the report and we can use it again in a couple of minutes. All right, so Daniel, if there are questions, please go ahead and pepper away. Don't see any yet. Okay, great. All right, so just to give you a couple more examples of stuff we can do. So we could do one versus open analysis. And that's kind of like that example that we just did. But we, what I did in this case, in that first block, I added a summary formula for win ratio. 
And so there are other things we can do. So in this case, um, we did uh, the first block is one of the current fiscal year. And then block two is open ops. And we might do some analysis. In this case, this was just grouped by owner and based on their win rate, and we're seeing what their open pipeline, and we might just sort of make some decision, where are we gonna place our bets? Like um, Evelyn here closed 33 million, has a 91% win ratio, but she's got kind of a small pipe. I might actually do a marketing event just around her, just because of that information that I can glean from this report. You could do the same thing grouping by region, by industry, by account, and so on by household if you're doing nonprofit stuff. Okay, so another example um, just to show you is um, to calculate a pro projected amount. So this is using, and you can see like the FX here and the FX here, that's telling us that these are formula columns. This one on the left is just a regular old summary formula within that first block. And the one over here on the right is actually a little more advanced. It's a cross block formula. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in, in a minute. But just to show you it in action, this cross block formula is taking um, the, uh, the sum of the amount of one ops and it's multiplying it by the win ratio and it's, it's putting that data over here. Uh, and what you do is you add a cross block formula on that block where you want it to be deposited and then write your formula and you can reference um, fields and summary fields that are in other, um, uh, other blocks. So it's kind of super cool. And then you can see the scatter plot that I've applied up here at the top. And just mentioning the cross block formulas, um, we can summarize at a grouping or a grand total level. Uh, you can sum min, max, or average. You can have up to 10 per block. And as uh, Evan shared with me the other day, you can have up to 50 per joined report. I haven't ever tried that many. Um, in the documentation, it says you can have up to uh, 10 per uh, joined report. But as Evan shared with me, he's actually gone beyond that and, and is sharing that you can go up to 50 per joined report. That's kind of cool. The one thing about cross block formulas, just like summary formulas is they can't reference one another. And this formula here, it's in pretty small font, but I'll, I'll share the, the, the text in a minute, the, the syntax. All right, so I feel like I um, somehow skipped a slide and what I want you to do, let's do two examples. Um, and the first example, what I want you to do is take this same report, edit it, and then add a block for open cases. So please try this. I'm sorry that I don't know where my slide went, but um, I wanted you to try um, editing this uh, joined report that we just created and saved. And um, ultimately I'm gonna ask you to save it as something else. But in this case, um, uh, if you edit this, click on the add block to add a, the, a report on cases. So we're gonna add a, a third block on this report for cases and if you'd name it open cases and then adjust the filter. I'm gonna see if I can find, how did I miss it? Huh. Oh, here it is here. Okay, great. All right, so here's the, uh, somehow my slides are out of order. Um, uh, this is this is the exercise that I'd like you to try, and, and it's just starting with that same report that we just created, and adding a third block to it. So if you reuse the same report, edit the report. One suggestion I'd have is to just make sure you have the row counts on; otherwise, that that um, cases block will be invisible to you. So then once you've added a block for open cases, relabel the, rename the block, add the filter, and then save it with a slightly different name, the name that I've got here down at the bottom. So we can go ahead and try that. And we'll just do it together in case uh, you're part of the way through. So again, I'm starting on that same report. And I might immediately save as so that I don't overwrite my original report and just you know create an, create another version of it. 
But once I edit this report, because it's already a joined report, it's already set up as a joined report, I can go ahead and add another block. So that's what we're gonna do for this example. And we're gonna choose under customer support reports, we're gonna choose cases. And we'll just leave the include default columns for now. Now, notice that the common fields are listed over here on the right when you choose the report type, that we can use account fields such as industry or household name or something like that. We can also use the user um, as a common field. Okay, so we've added our third block and I can't see anything. This is that example that I gave that if the row counts are off, the detail rows are off. So I'm just gonna add the row counts back just click that toggle and suddenly you can see the third block appear. So that's a little catch uh, gotcha for some folks. You can always see down at the bottom of the column list, you can always see that block and you could add columns, but if row counts and detail rows are hidden, you're not seeing it. Uh, you have to sum by something. So let's go ahead and relabel the block and we'll call it open cases. Click uh, return or enter. So now I have my third block. Notice the coloring is different. For years and years and years with joined reports and classic, you couldn't reuse the same report type. And so each report type that you put would have a different color. And I was kind of startled when I realized, oh, they use one color per uh, report type. They don't change the colors. It would sort of be nice if this was a different color to just accentuate that it's a different report block, but they don't. So. I guess we'll roll with the punches. So now that I've relabeled this block open cases, we'll go ahead and click on filters. And I'm gonna collapse the other two filters and we're just gonna add a filter of closed equals false. Closed equals false. So again, after adding and renaming my uh, block on open cases, I clicked on filters went down to the open case filters. I added a filter for closed equals false and I'll go ahead and click apply. And now if I run this, um, you know, in this example, I might wanna change it from industry and maybe do it by owner. Uh, in fact, why don't I do that example? We'll just show you how to change the, um, the cross block grouping. So I can do it in two ways. I can just get rid of the industry or I could add it and then remove the industry. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just um, type in the letter. So I got rid of the industry um, cross block grouping and we're gonna add account owner, which are, there are three account fields that I could use that are available to all these blocks. And this is very busy while it's expanded. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and toggle off the detail rows again. This is the toggle switch at the bottom of the page here. And I'll go ahead and run it. So you can see how this works, right? You, you could start with a report and you could create a bunch of different types of joined reports just by doing save as, saving as another name. Maybe we wanna do another type of analysis. Maybe we wanna look at how many cases of all time have we closed for this? How many priority one cases? And you could use filters to help you get at that stuff. All right, so um, just to share a couple things you can do with blocks, we can reorder them, we can rename them, we can show or hide the record counts. We just did that. We can delete blocks. Uh, I mentioned that we can reuse the same report type and that different report types show as different colored blocks. So the case one, it has the green and the others have the blue at the top. All right. Um, so I think I talked about those couple cross block formulas. I do wanna share, um, so we won't do this exercise. We, we just have a few minutes for questions and let people get on to the inauguration. Um, but um, over here um, on this example, so using that same source report, that first one that we created, the joined report with two blocks, you could add a cross block formula to calculate the projected amount one. So we know the history of the one ops. If we're looking at a list of one ops, we could determine the win ratio and we could multiply that by the amount of the open pipeline and produce a projection based on our past history for agriculture, we could do a projection. And this is what the formula looks like. So this is very much unlike other formulas you're used to, that this is using an array, B0 is for block, essentially that principal block on the left, and then B1, and I don't ever write this, I just use the field picker 
And what I'm dragging over is one sum insert and then do the operator divides and then drag over closed sum. So I'm gonna show you this quickly and then we'll get to, I'll just even use the same report uh, just to show this example to you quickly. Uh, so on this joined report, the same one, I'll go to the open pipeline because that's where I'm gonna to wanna to show that projected win amount. And I'm gonna to go to add cross block summary formula. I'm gonna do this example quickly. So just watch on the screen here, don't try to follow along. We'll call this projected win amount. Uh, projected uh, win amount, something like that. I'll make it a currency. Now, this is where we type our formula. This is the formula editor, and this is a very simple one. I'm gonna do the one sum. So I'm gonna highlight one, click insert, use the operator divide. And you can see here, it's probably very small on your screens, but it's B zero uh, pound one colon sum. So it's automatically writing the formula for me by, based on what I'm selecting over here in the field picker. Uh, so I'm gonna divide that by the closed sum. And again, it's a pr very simple formula. If needed, we also have access to, it's something like 25, 25 exact functions. We have exactly 25. I'm gonna go ahead and validate this. And one other thing that you can do with a, a cross block summary, just like regular summary and even uh, row level, well not row level, summary formulas, we can choose what, what uh, grouping level we're gonna display this at. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this and we can just see this example in motion that we have this projected win amount here. Oh, you know what I didn't, <laughs> somebody should have said something. Uh, I didn't uh, actually do the math. So this is, um, we have some more work to do here. We have to multiply it by the amount. So I have one more step to do. So I'm actually gonna put these into parentheses and then I'm gonna multiply and I'm gonna drag the, um, uh, I'm gonna go to the second block for open pipeline and I'm gonna drag the amount. And this is an important thing that you are aware that you have these different blocks that you can expand and collapse uh, even in the formula field picker. So I'll go ahead and multiply this by the sum of the amount. I'll validate that. Okay, uh, oh, I'm missing an open paren it looks like, and we'll validate that. And we'll apply it and we should get our math done correctly here. And there it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and we can see what the output looks like. So this is an example of adding a cross block uh, formula. And um, this is what the formula itself looks like uh, here. I tend not to write these. I just use the field, you know, you select the cross block formula and then select the fields appropriately from the field picker and then add in the uh, operators such as divided by, multiply by parentheses. All right, so just as a quick- Two good questions in the chat. Okay. I'll look at them in one sec. Just as a quick recap, we talked about things you can do and you can't do with joined reports. We talked about use cases. We went through some quick tips. Uh, we did an example of one in open ops by industry. Uh, we talked about cross block formulas, scatters and stuff like that. Um, we do have a couple more dojo sessions, uh, February 3rd and also February 17th, those are scheduled. And the two in March will also be on formulas. So if you wanna learn formulas, please uh, join us again. And we'll just do a real deep dive for three sessions on using formulas for reporting. Um, uh, at OpFocus, we have two training classes coming up. I'm teaching a five-day admin class and I'm also teaching a two-day reporting workshop in March. If you'd like to join, uh, we've got uh, offers here for the dojo um, with these bit.ly links. And those, um, you can see um, uh, information on the Dashboard Dojo website as well about the classes. All right, so we're gonna jump to the questions. Uh, Daniel, do you wanna read them off? Sure, Bill asks two great questions. How well do these export to Excel? That's the first one. Oh, um, great question. I wonder if somebody has a quick answer for that. I'm trying to think of the last time that I actually exported to Excel. Um, I do think that this is something that is supported. Um, and um, there is the export choice here. Now I haven't saved this report, I've edited it. But if I go ahead and choose export here, we can export the formatted version of it. And why don't I save this and just see if we get one more option for it. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this as copy and I have a lot of 
Zoom window's in the way. And uh, now that this is a run report and I choose export, I'm just curious. Okay, so it seems like we can just format it. That, that's our option uh, is to export it as formatted. But it is sometimes helpful to try it while you're running the report, see what the export is like, and then also save it and run it and see what the export is like. Because uh, for non-joined reports, there is a difference. So great question. It looks the other like one I'm, is, yeah, oh, go, ahead. go for it. Oh, about um, making my tips more readable. You know what I'll do? I'll tweet them out. How about that? So if you haven't uh, followed uh, me on Twitter, um, it's just David P. Carnes three, um, and I'll, I'll tweet those out. And uh, um, so sorry about the small screenshot size. Uh, you know, it's fun to put those together and try to put them in a logical order. Um, so. Oh, making the reports more readable. Sorry, I thought you meant the tips more readable. Sorry, Bill, my, my bad interpretation. Um, you know, tips for making reports more readable. Great question. So, you know, I would say remove stuff that you don't need. Like in this case, the record count, I don't know if it's given me a ton of information. Um, because I added cases, that's something that's usually record counted or row counted. I'm showing the record counts, but um, I try to just have as few columns as possible not overload the report to just make it more read readable. I also build don't show detail rows as much as, you know, if you if you toggle this detail rows on, you are just going to be bombarded with just, it's like too hard to make sense of it. In fact, it's going to take a while for it to run because Bruce Kennedy has 28 opportunities. Like, how do you deal with that? All right. Well, um, so we're getting up to the time. Um, uh, of uh, the inaug inauguration. Um, I've got people texting me, asking me if I'm watching the inauguration. So hopefully nothing's going on <laughs> that's untoward. Uh, but um, uh, uh, next up on the, so first off, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you to Daniel for helping uh, me host this today. Daniel will, will be presenting on reporting in the nonprofit success pack on February 3rd. Uh, we've also Oh no, I didn't put the right date for uh, the next, uh, was it February 17th for the formulas for reporting part one. Um, and then we'll, in March, we'll have two more dates on formulas. So I hope you can uh, join us again. All right, guys, I guess, uh, I guess it's time to go watch an inauguration. So hopefully things go smoothly. Uh, best wishes to everybody with your reporting on joined reports.